Hi, I'm Dr. Sumita Sandhu and I will be taking a tutorial on the preparation of class 2 cavity. I have been training students for past 20 years, so I have a pretty good idea about the tips and tricks required to make a correct cavity. So let's go ahead. Well, at this stage you must be knowing very well that class 2 cavities are those which are present on the proximal surfaces of the posterior teeth. Now this is an outline form for a distal occlusal cavity on a molar. So our first step is going to be to draw an outline form on the teeth. We begin from the mesial groove. We move along the central groove, go towards the buccal groove, then again the central groove and then towards the lingual groove. Then we follow the central groove till we reach the distal pit. Now on reaching the distal pit, since we have to proceed proximally, what do we do first? The first step is to mark the contact area. Now the contact area is somewhere here. Right? Now our outline form on the proximal side should be such that we include this contact area. So buccally we will have to proceed outwards like this and lingually something like this. Now in this outlined form for the proximal box we have included the contact area completely. At this point I want to make one thing very clear. The outlined form for the proximal box varies with the tooth anatomy, its location and its contact with the adjacent tooth. Now if you move your focus to the second molar here and observe its contact with the third molar, what will you observe? You will see that the contact happens somewhere here. So the outline form is like this. Now if you observe the distal occlusal outline forms for the two molars, you will see that the outline form for the second molar is more centered as compared to the first molar here the outline form for the proximal box is more buccally placed so keeping in mind the basic principles you have to modify slightly depending upon the location of the contacts i am using a straight fisher burr the length of this burr head i measured was 4 mm now since the depth of the cavity is around 1.5 to 2 mm, therefore we do not need to proceed beyond half the length of this bird head. That means the depth of the cavity should not be more than this half. First, a class 1 cavity is cut on the occlusal surface. I am going to begin from the mesial pit. Let me just clear the cavity. I can have a clearer view of it now. Now we will convert our class 1 cavity into class 2. I am moving in a buccolingual direction as I proceed distally because my buccolingual area has to be widened as compared to the remaining cavity. In this manner, I slowly cut towards the distal marginal ridge. You can see that we are coming closer to the distal marginal ridge. A very thin portion is just left. But at this moment, this area of the pulpal floor is raised. It is not deep enough as compared to this. So I have to first get it to the, this depth same as the depth here. So I am going to do that now. Just let us see what we have got now. So we have our cavity proceeding. You can see it here. See my this depth is now come at the same level with that of the central 
groove or central pit whatever we have developed here and see now the look at the shape I have stopped cutting more on the lingual side and I have started proceeding on the buckle side because we need to reach somewhere here so this is how I have started giving a curve here but it is at the same depth as my remaining purple floor I'm proceeding more on the buckle side as compared to the lingual. At the same time, I'm trying to maintain the depth and I'm trying to maintain a thin layer of enamel on the distal side that is maintained so that we do not damage the adjacent tooth during cutting. Let us just check how much we have cut. This is the shape that we have attained so far. On the buckle side we have extended in this manner and on the lingual side it is almost straight. This is the kind of shape that I really wanted and I have a thin layer of enamel here. Now at this point I will start making a proximal ditch. That means I will move my pearl from buckle to the lingual side just here and I will make a well or a ditch in this area. Now what will be the depth of the ditch? The depth of the ditch will be till the contact point and how do we find that? Now let us tilt it here and see. Now this is the contact point of these two teeth here and we have to proceed 0.5 mm below the contact point somewhere here. Fine? We have to proceed till here. So what we do is we'll measure the depth externally like this and it comes to around third marking on this probe. That way, that manner we will be about 0.5 mm below the contact. So when we make the ditch here, we will measure the depth till the third marking of the explore of this particular probe. Let's proceed with that. I am moving my bird from buckle lingual direction and I have tilted my bird slightly towards the mesial end because there is a cervical constriction in the tooth at the neck of the tooth. Let us see. We had planned that our depth should be till the third mark of the probe like this. Now let's place it inside and we discover that our depth is right till the point where we had planned. So we have reached the depth that we wanted. Now our next step is going to be to make a cut with help of a burr, one at the facial limit like this, other at the lingual limit like this. You can see that the wall on the buccal limit and the lingual limit has got fractured and a thin unsupported wall is present here. Now this needs to be removed and the proximal box needs to be refined a little. The thin wall can be fractured or removed with help of an explorer or an enamel hatchet or it can be cut with help of a bird. It depends upon the convenience of the operator. In this proximal box you can see 
that the buccal proximal margin is moving outwards beyond the contact. The lingual proximal margin is almost straight and the gingival margin is clear from the adjacent tooth by about 0.5 mm. And this depth of this proximal box is 0.5 mm below the contact area. These are the dimensions of an initial class 2 cavity preparation for an amalgam restoration. Enamel hatchet can be used to plane the walls and the floor of the proximal box. To smoothen them. Then we can use a gingival marginal trimmer to bevel the gingival margin and to round off the axiopulpal line angle. So this is a completed class 2 cavity preparation. I hope you followed it. So in the nutshell, we have tried to make a preparation in which the cavo surface margin is a butt joint, the pulpal floor is flat, the axial wall is straight and parallel to the long axis of the tooth, the axiopalpal line angle is beveled or rounded and the gingival margin is beveled and is distinct. Well, you know that practice makes the man perfect, so do practice your class 2 cavities till you make a perfect one. Thank you.